everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Feral Phelps Show. This show is actually going to be dedicated to our wonderful friend, Angela Betzel, who we actually lost on last week. Uh, my guest today is none other than Miss Anika Chambers, blues artist. Welcome to the show, Anika. <laughs> If you guys have not heard about Anika, trust me, you will hear about Anika Chambers. She's doing major things in the blues world uh, as a young artist, only 30, can I say your age? 31. 31 years old, and she's making waves in blues, which is kind of unusual for someone your age. Right. Everybody's into hip-hop and rap and that type of thing, but she's actually a blues artist and just recently nominated for... I was nominated for a Blues Music Award for my first record, and this record... That's fantastic, and this record is number seven on the Billboard right now. Uh, so yeah, that's quite an accomplishment. Quite an accomplishment, and the title is Wild and Free. I, Wild, I gotta ask you, how did you come up with that title? Well, um, <laughs> it kind of goes with my story. I, I had to do a six-month stint in prison, and so. Uh, when I got out, I was like, man, I just feel so free, and I called it wild and free, and I just let me go. <laughs> my team just let me go. I, I, said, I felt like they just let me run free and just do my thing, and yeah. so that's how it came about. And the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. And now, now, you know, one of the purposes of this show is to educate, motivate, and inspire. And one of the reasons that I wanted you on the show, because you and I met, uh, God, what, it's been, has it been a yeah, year about yet? about a year and a half About ago. a year and a half yeah. ago at Sambuca's downtown, the jazz club. Mm -hmm. And we had conversation that night. I told you about the show, this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. And then I caught up with you recently. Right. Uh, but between that time period and now was when the, uh, the incident happened with where you had the prison right. stay. I want, I, want to I want you to share a little bit more about what took place for you to even have to experience the uh, being in prison okay. uh, when that happened in your life. And I want you to share the story only because I want you to inspire somebody else out there who have had bad experiences right. to let them know it don't matter what your past is. You can always overcome, you can accomplish, you can achieve, and look at you now. So, you know, it's, it's just, so I just had to talk to you about yeah. that. So if you don't mind, if you could share a little bit about uh, what took place. Well, cool. If you would have asked me years ago uh, if prison would have saved my life, I probably would have told you there's no way. And I started dealing with this, looking at prison, I want to say 2013, and uh, I was a drunk, I was dealing with... Um, alcohol abuse, sex, sexual addiction, and just all kind of things that I felt like God just stopped me dead in my tracks and said, hey, we got to deal with this. And so I was in the military seven and a half years, and while I was in the service, I got involved with one of my leaders, and we were getting fraudulent recruitment bonuses. And uh, years later, I get out of the Army and then uh, didn't know this would come and bite me and save my life. And so... Um, mm. When it came about in 2013, I'd been out the army since 2011, and so um, they told me they said, "Well, you know, you're looking at 15 years in prison." And I said, "There's no way I can go do 15 years for, you know, 10 grand or 15 grand. Like that just made no sense to me." But the way God set it up, when I started going through uh, my pretrial services and they put me in counseling. They put me in rehab, and we start dealing with a lot of my issues and dealing with uh, rapes. I was raped as a, a young girl. I was raped in the service, and then uh, when when we came when we came back to 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 seeing the judge, it was I told her I say if I would not have dealt with dealing with getting these recruitment bonuses, I would have had my life saved, and so. Um, I was able to get sober. I'm two years sober. Um, wow. I was able to heal from all the trauma. And wow, then awesome. my team, we were able to put out my first record, which did very well. But this particular record, it just, it's all from the heart. It's all from my heart and soul. And you, when you listen to the words, you know, you know, you hear what I've been through. Yeah. And hear, hear the, the overcoming adversity aspect. And if I can encourage anybody, you know, going to prison was just like, man, just kind of taking a break to just reflect on everything that I've been through. And it was, I went to prison for, federal prison for six months and just got a chance to really get back on track and get out and say, okay, these are my goals. This is what I'm going to do. And it's happening. I've been out seven months now and things are just like... God and things are it. popping in her yeah. life. <laughs> yeah. 
know, uh, I, I, of course I enjoy Nika's music, and I, I've, of course I've had a chance to see her perform, and when I tell you she puts on a show, a high energy show, the show is off the chain. I'm like, where does girl get this energy from? I mean, it, that's it, the 31 in me. That's the 31 in you, you know what I'm saying? She's like, she like a cross between Tina Turner and Beyonce when she's on stage. When, I mean, she lights it up. She lights it up. I mean, she rap back and wild. I mean, she just happy flying and all that. Um, but she's just phenomenal, you know. So uh, you guys certainly support her, and I wanted her to share her story and everything. Now, when you went to, when you were getting ready to go to prison, some things were about to happen for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with your music. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. We had just recorded this record in LA and um, my team knew we, we had to prep this record in the feeling of how I would feel when I got out of prison. Mm. And so that was the hardest part as an artist to like say, okay, well how do you think you're going to feel in six months? Yeah. And so I wanted <clears throat> every song, I wanted to he you to hear the pain and, and the heartbreak, but I also wanted you to hear that overcoming part and say, okay, I'm here, I'm still here, is yeah. what, what, what it is. I'm still here. And so. And that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, oftentimes I say we don't have to finish where we start. Right. You know, we can start one place, but that don't mean we'll have to stay there. Um, and life is about transition and change. And when you see someone who has experienced what you've experienced, because not everybody's come out of what you've come out right. of. And when you're able to see that, it lets other people know that if she experienced this and she came out of it, then guess what? I, too, can come out of it. Uh, and so a the purpose of the show is to inspire people, man. And so with what you just said, you've definitely inspired people. And so I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I want to know what's next for Anika Chambers. Well, we head out on tour next week. We'll be in Alabama, Florida, Georgia. Uh, they'll do a few more shows in Florida, and then I come back and I head to Brazil for the rest of the month in November. Wow. 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 You know, I like you, but I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Brazil too. <laughs> I want a tour. I ain't got nothing to say though. <laughs> I can take my pictures. That I can take, yeah. There it is. I can take her pictures. Okay, y'all hook that up. Yeah, let's Brother need up. a vacation right, right, right now. Um, I want to ask you, what are some of your musical influences? Well, I grew up, my grandparents raised me. My mom was 14 when she had me, so my grandmother took me in and just, uh, she had me listen to a lot of Mahalia Jackson and James okay. Cleveland, and she kind of kept me sheltered till I was 18, and then, um, once I got to be 18, went to the Army, I was like, oh, there's more music out here. <laughs> and I started listening to like Tina Turner and Etta James, and I really started to hear myself in this music. And I just fell in love with the blues at 19, I think. I just was like, yes, this is what I meant to say. Is that right? Yeah. At 19? 19. 19. It is so interesting when you say you, you, you fell in love with the blues and being a young person I like did. you are, because most, most of the younger generation tend to run from blues. Right. You know, because that was their mom and dad is music, and we yeah. ain't want to hear it. You know, or that cafe kind of situation yeah. going on, and so we would yeah. tend to run from it and listen to things that we wanted to, to listen right. to. Uh, so, th so that's very interesting that you chose uh, the blues genre. I love it. It's all in me. Of right? music. And then I have a story to really like to share support. with the blues. Yeah, you can. You gotta have have a, a story, and it gotta be in your soul to sing the blues. And I, I totally agree. And guess what? We're gonna be back in just a moment. You guys stick around with more of the Phil Phil Show and my wonderful guest, Miss Anika Chambers. Sky Trues Custom Eyewear has taken the world by storm. In only eight months, Sky Trues has gained the eyes of many, including celebs like Big Sean, Little Flip, Destiny Child, Soldier Boy, just to name a few. Through custom design, Sky Trues can put your imagination on your frames. I bring to you the next big thing in Houston, Sky Trues, created by Golden Boy, the musician, the artist, the entrepreneur, and grassroots marketing genius. Be inspired, Sky Trues, custom designed frames. Sky Trues!
Hello and welcome back to this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show with my awesome guest today, Anika Chambers. Welcome back, Anika. <laughs> you know, uh, if you guys are just joining us, Anika was sharing her amazing story uh, from trials to triumphs and uh, what she's doing and what she's done uh, in the music industry as a blues artist um, and went through a challenging time in her life, but she's back on top and she's doing things and traveling the world. Uh, of which I'm a little bit jealous of, <laughs> on our way to Brazil on tour. Uh, we'll be at Discovery Green this coming Thursday, uh, so you guys might want to make sure you check her out there as well. Now, we were uh, talking earlier when we were taking a little break. Mm -hmm. How did you actually formulate your band? Okay. Well, uh, in 2012, my producers were, uh, they were, uh, what do you call it? They were judges in this competition called the International Blues Challenge in, here in Houston. And so the band that wins here gets to go and compete in Memphis. And so we made it to the finals. We didn't win, but the producers were like, hey, we'd love to put a demo together for you if you'd be interested. And I said, sure, why not? I'm still going to go to Memphis and network and do my thing there, uh, even though we didn't win. And so we got together, start working on all this music. And my demo turned into my first record, which we got a nomination for, which was super cool. And, wow. Uh, then we decided to start working on the second record. And I said, well, you know I'm going to prison. And so how are we going to make this work? And they said, you're just going to have to trust us. So uh, last September, we went in the studio in L.A. And uh, it was just, it all came together. And then um, the process of the record is not just recording, you have to mix and master the record. Mm -hmm. So I was leaving to go to prison three weeks after we recorded. And so I came home to a finished record, completed. And when I listened to it, you would have thought I had approved everything because it was, it was just great. I was very, very, very. <laughs> So they, they found me. The question, did they, they found that answers me. The question. Yeah. You know, and the beautiful thing about what you just said is that obviously there was a team in place. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and in order for that vision to come to pass, it took a, a wonderful team. And so oh, yeah. that's what made that come to pass. Oh, yeah. You had the right people around you. Yeah. And so I always say teamwork makes what? Dreamwork. Dreamwork. Dream work. Yeah. And that was certainly obvious with what has taken place with Anika Chambers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we talked about music and influences and things like that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you too, because uh, I, I have to invite you to be a part of something that I'm doing, okay. um, especially since we, we're friends now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Freedman Sound Project, okay. where yeah. we actually uh, use various artists who are in various genres of music yeah. to participate in Freedman's Town. Yeah. And uh, so I'm actually inviting you right now in front of all these people Let's to be a part it. of the project. I'm in. <coughs> there you, hey, I'm she's in. in. There it is. <laughs> And, and you will certainly be among some some great people who are uh, also a part of that project is the Joe Sample Band. Yeah. Uh, they're oh. a part of it as, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, also another music legend, Jewel Brown, yeah. who was the last person to perform with Louis Armstrong. Yeah. Uh, she's in the yeah. project as well. Um, and now you're in the project. Yes, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 I'm excited about that. You know, and it was important to me to use people that were local people yeah. uh, who, who certainly could relate to the plight of Freeman's Town. Right. And I'm just super excited now that you've accepted my invitation. And we and we even shaking on it, all right? <laughs> that, that, in front of the whole world. We'll shake on it. In front of the whole world. Um, I wanted to ask you, how do people find out more about Anika Chambers? Well, you can go to anikachambers.com, A N N I K A. <laughs> AnikaChambers.com. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and I just got on Snapchat. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm on Snapchat. So. All right. <laughs> on Snapchat. Yeah. I haven't figured that thing out yet. I haven't Either. even figured out Twitter though. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I even, I really just figured out Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I, if you want to so, find me, find me on Facebook. I'm very accessible. On yeah, Facebook. she's very accessible on Facebook. And I, I went, you know, of course, because we're going to do this, uh, the interview. I did a little, needless to say, research, so yeah. I go through the videos and all that stuff. And man, I saw you performing, I think it was like maybe a week before last, Okay. in that red dress yeah. with the wings. <laughs> she had a red dress on, had wings, like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and she was tearing it up. Uh, and I noticed your audience is, is uh, you, have a, you have a very large Caucasian following, yeah. uh, I've noticed. Yeah. And most of the band is Caucasian brothers up there. Yeah. I've no and they get down. Yeah. And you get down yeah. with them. We all, I try to have a mix <laughs> of everybody. My, my um, 
crowds are normally super, super mixed. But, mm -hmm. I mean, the reality of the blues now, the uh, contemporary blues, it is more Caucasian. When you go to the different festivals, it, mm -hmm. for some reason, it's, it's that way. But... I just like getting on stage and doing my thing. So, uh. and, and you do it very well. <laughs> and I can't Thank wait till you. all these people get a chance to look yeah. you up on YouTube and yeah. see the videos for themselves. And this CD, uh, Wild and Free, is actually available now. Yes. Everywhere. Is, that, is that on iTunes? iTunes yeah, or? iTunes, Amazon, my website. Uh, just go find you can easily find Anika Chambers. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the Feral Phelps Show. I've thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> chatting with you, and I think the world will become better after listening to your story tonight. Oh, thank you so much. Absolutely. And I want you to stick around because you know you're going to do a song in a yeah. little while that's dedicated to our wonderful friend Angela Betzel, who we lost recently. Um, and so we're going to be blessed by Anika Chambers and also our next guest who's going to do a song uh, honoring our wonderful friend as well. The next guest coming up is R.L. Bell. Uh, he was on the show America's Got Talent, uh, one of the top contenders on that show. He's with us today. You guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> edition of the Feral Felt Show. As promised, I have Mr. R.L. Bell in the house. Welcome to the show, R.L. Now, you know, many of you may not know, but R.L. Bell was on the hit show, America's Got Talent, the Simon Caldwell show. Now, Simon Caldwell was the same guy with uh, American Idol that started American Idol, then he yeah, did a spinoff show. Right, you right. won that spinoff show, and you made a big name for yourself on the show. Tell me a little bit about that. I did. Um... You know, I have a publicist and a PR team, and they they got a hold of them, and um, I, I, I don't know how they did it, but they asked me to go to Dallas for an audition. Okay. And um, I drove down there and um, <clears throat> did a did an audition for them, and I guess I blew them away, and, and they, they wanted me to come to Hollywood. All right. Yeah, to do the show. And um, I don't know, I think I, I think I left an imprint with them. Um, with the voice, and then they was looking at the body. I guess I don't know what they were looking at, but they were just like, "We want you to Hollywood, and you know, to come to Hollywood, and, right. and, and be on the show." So that's where it started. That's how it started. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you say you they 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 were enamored by the voice, and you say you guess the body. <laughs> Now that now, now, I see, he tried, <laughs> he tried to be modest, but uh, uh, now, now one of the things that I know, because Arnie and I go back about what about thirty years. Yeah, yeah, somewhere <clears throat> close to that. Like, that's how far back we go, you know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, I remember when we first started this, that and the other. And and so uh, it was really interesting how I've seen his career evolve from, from that time. Now, when you talk about the muscles, the, the ladies have always gone crazy over his muscles, you know? So on the show, they had you to do some things to kind of show off that, right? Yeah, they did. Um, you know, when I went and auditioned in Dallas, um, I did the audition dressed covered up and uh, I was supposed to do three songs for the audition and um, you know he, the guy I guess was blown away with two and he didn't have to hear three okay and so I'm just standing there and I was hot and, uh, <laughs> and I just I just took my jacket off and when I took the jacket off I think that's what, what kind of kind of made him go a little crazy a little cuckoo a little bit and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know when I got to Hollywood um, you know, it was just, I mean, taking my jacket off, taking my shirt off or whatever, it's part of my routine. Okay. It's kind of like showing off something. It's kind of like my gimmick. In the yeah, you know kind of get, get them hyped. Yeah, and I just said to myself, you know, if that happened with the audition in Dallas, let me do it for the world, you know. Okay. And, um, and I think they, they really appreciated that. <clears throat> Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that's. I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. Uh, now you're also working on a CD, from what I understand. I am. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm working on a single. The single will be done in two weeks, and uh, it'll, it'll be available. Um, <clears throat> and I also have a guy that's working with me now. Um, he's CeeLo's writer. Okay. Um, he does songs for CeeLo, and he just sent me a track. And 
wanted me to take a listen to it and see what I thought about it. I did that, and I told him I need a dance tune. Okay. I mean, I can sit and write a tune myself, but sometimes it's good to step outside the box and yeah, you know, go go with someone else. And he did that, and I like it. And I, 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 I kind of like this kind of got a little hip to it. A little so, something, something. Mm -hmm. I, call, right, I call right. it. I'm calling it uh, the new disco. Yeah. Yeah. The, the new disco. The new music. disco. All right. All right. All right. All right. I think it's important that as artists that we learn to stretch ourselves. That's and a lot of times we can stay in a box, but, but we can only grow when we begin to stretch ourselves and, and, and uh, you know, tread on uncharted territory, right. I guess right. might be a good way to put it. Now, I want to ask you too, because I try to define your musical genre. Mm -hmm. And I had a difficult time. I had a difficult time putting you in the box and saying uh, R.L. is a R&B singer. Right. Or R.L. is a... Or, you know, country, whatever. Your, your, your style is a little different. How would you define your style, and what have been some of your musical influences? Well, you know, I sing, I sing a little bit of everything because um, I want to I please everybody. I don't just want to be stuck with R&B or whatever, but my number one thing that I really like is R&B. Okay. And the funk, you know, um, which is what I wanted to do on the show. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to do what I really wanted to do on the show, but, you know, everything has to clear on the show when, you, when you're doing these type of... Uh, events and whatnot, but I love the R and B because it's 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 soulful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And my dad and my mom, I grew up listening to that type of music with them. Okay. Um they're the ones that I looked up to is my mom and dad. You yeah. know, a lot of people ask me, Well who do you who do you follow after or whatnot? I don't really have any artists out there that that I really look up to. I mean I have a lot of artists that I like. Got you. But I, I got it really from my mom and dad, so I, those are the two people that I really look up to, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, my mom, you know, she was a big time musician all over Houston, da -da -da -da. and my dad, he had a big singing scholarship, uh, you know, in school and whatnot, mm -hmm. in college, but he, he, he didn't do anything with it. Okay, and, uh, okay. Yeah, and I just feel like that I'm living, I'm living my dream through, through them. Gotcha. gotcha. And that, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of times I'll, I'll see children living their, basically the, the things that the parents can get to accomplish. If right. the child is in that same genre, they'll try to achieve that thing. And obviously, you're achieving that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I know that you also had some gospel <coughs> influences. And your, your mom, definitely, I know Miss Bell, yeah, uh, played right. the piano right, right, at right. the church. Right, right. And, and all that. <laughs> And all that good stuff, and had a beautiful voice herself, so I can certainly mm -hmm. understand how how that kind of fell on. Oh yeah, Mr. Yeah. R.L. Bell. Yeah, they had us singing. My brothers and I. Um, I mean, she had us, and my dad had us singing. When we were little bitty kids, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why you know I'm so used to singing in front of a crowd because we started young. Yeah. You know, and my daddy always told us, you know, hey, you know what, y'all don't have to do anything on stage, but just stand out there and sing. You ain't got to act a fool. Mm -hmm. You know, but sometimes I like the acaphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know, I mean, I like how you just tell it like it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, you know, I love the R and B, the funk, the the even even some rock stuff. My mm -hmm. band, um, we're more or less a uh, funk rock group, is what we are, with okay. a little sexiness to it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, I, I might be doing an R and B song, but I put a rock feel to it from the guitar player. Okay, okay, you, you, all right. You see what I mean? And yeah. a lot of people say that, you know what, this is, and if, if, you know, let's just say I do a cover song. All right. If I do a cover song, and it's an R&B song, and I put a rock feel to it, it gives it a, 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 a different feeling to everybody. That's that song, but listen to how he's doing it. Yeah, you see what yeah. I mean? doing just, it your way. Doing it my way. <clears> you it's know? just about being different, that's all. And I think that's important. <clears throat> and a lot of times, and I say this on the show all the time, being mm -hmm. different is what makes you stand out. You put a person stand right, out. Right, right. You know, because anybody can blend in. It's easy to blend in. I always use this analogy. Yeah, yeah. In a sea of black, right. if there's one <clears throat> dot of red in the sea of black, what are you going to notice? You're going to notice the red. That's right. Why? Because it's different than everything around it. So it's okay to be different. Right, right, right. And that's what gets the attention. Yeah, yeah. And, and I also feel like anybody can be ordinary, but why be ordinary when you have the propensity to be extraordinary? Exactly. You know? Exactly. And obviously exactly. that's what you're doing with what you do, man. It's just been me, Farrell. You've been knowing me a long time. and it's Too just, long. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, my family, my family always tell me that I'm the different one. Mm -hmm. in, in the family, you know, my mom tell me all the time, she say, son, don't take this the wrong way, but you're the daughter that I never had. Uh -huh. <laughs> Seriously, and, and, and I don't take that the wrong way, it's just yeah. that, um, you know, I just I just see myself different too, you know, I've always dressed different, you know, back in the day how I used to Oh be. yeah, oh yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. 
Yeah, and you know, and you know that's what's cool though, because again, that's what makes you stand out. Mm -hmm. And when you say, when you say, made the comment, your mom said you're the daughter she ever had. I understand the concept of why she says that too, because of the nurturing person that you've been right. to your mom at this right. time in her life. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 you you've been a, the man that you're supposed to be mm -hmm. uh, to your mom, and, and you and I have that thing in common. So exactly. I certainly exactly. understand uh, yeah. that when 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 you say that. Right. Uh, we're going to be back in just a moment. Yeah. <laughs> Stick around for more of Mr. R. L. Bell. The show is not over. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Sky Truth! Sky Truth Custom Eyewear has taken the world by storm. In only eight months, Sky Trues has gained the eyes of many, including celebs like Big Sean, Little Flip, Destiny Child, Soldier Boy, just to name a few. Through custom design, Sky Trues can put your imagination on your frames. I bring to you the next big thing in Houston, Sky Trues, created by Golden Boy, the musician, the artist, the entrepreneur, and grassroots marketing genius. Be inspired, Sky Trues. Custom designed frames. Sky True. All right, welcome back to this edition of the Feral Film Show with my awesome guest today, Mr. R. L. Bell. <laughs> now, uh, when we left off, we were talking about your career and different things that take place. We talked about groupies. Mm -hmm. uh, we, were, we were getting ready to talk about the groupies. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned when you sing in the songs, you want uh, you want the words and, and your feelings and emotions to connect. <laughs> With your female audience exactly. and that type of thing, yeah. Uh, yeah. so that's what you strive for. That's what I strive for. I mean, like I said, it all depends on what the song is about. Like the new song that I'm that I'm writing right now is is um, basically like you know we're all we're all one color, even though we have different shades, but we're all one color inside. Mm -hmm. So I want everybody to feel what I'm singing about on that. You know, like I was saying earlier, you know, if it's a sexy song or whatnot, I want that. I want that lady to feel what I'm what I'm saying and what I'm singing about. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I speak for the guys, all the guys in the world that's that's got these ladies in their lives and you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and want to connect with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, and that that's the beautiful thing about music because you want your audience to connect with what you're saying because right. that makes your music sellable. That's it right. makes your music relatable. Mm -hmm. And people like to hear songs that they can relate to. Or that tells perhaps the story that they themselves have experienced in life uh, that they can identify with and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to switch a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> we know you're a vocalist. We know you, you're doing your thing. You travel the world. But before you did that, you had a very interesting job. Yeah, I did. As a massage therapist. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I just have to ask you, what was that experience like? <laughs> well, there again, um, it's kind of like, you know... I've done that for 17, 18 years. For I, 17, I, you've been yeah. working, okay. Yeah, massage right. therapy. Um, you know, it's just like singing. Massaging is just like singing to me. And it's like, and I massage m more women than I do guys. Right. You know, um, and when I'm, when, it don't matter who's on my table, I want to connect with them mentally. Yeah. I want them to feel my energy. I want to feel their energy, blah, blah, blah. And that's how it is in, in, in my songs. Okay. The same, same scenario. Mm -hmm. So, um, Doing massage therapy, it's it. I loved it, right? You know, because I was doing something to make someone feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I'm about, and, and that's what I'm about in in the in music my, as well. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So I just I just got to ask you, just because I'm just being like a devil's advocate tonight. Okay. All right. So, have you ever had any experiences where you your 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 you were challenged? Uh, professionally being a massage therapist, but like somebody try to go overboard with it and think it's more than a massage or anything like that? All the time. You had that kind of craziness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How uh, do you handle it, that? It, it happens. I mean, you have to do it in a professional way. I remember um, when I was getting my license, when I was in school, getting my license to be a massage therapist. Before I went to go and do my big test, mm -hmm. um, my teacher told me, he said, Ariel, come here, I need to tell you something. And he said, I need to tell you this out of everybody in the class. Yeah. And he told me, he said, um, you have to be careful. And I asked him why. And uh, he said, because you probably most likely going to have a lot of female clients. Yeah. And you're going to get challenged a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, 
all I can tell you is when they come to your office, you got to be on the up and up. Yeah. Okay, because it's going to come times where just what you just asked me. Right, right. That they're looking for something more. Mm. You know, and, and I find being a massage therapist that a lot of a lot of people are going through other issues than just stress. Okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of people want to talk about it when they're getting a the massage because when you come see me, I'm going like to ask you. Like not only are you getting physical therapy, <clears throat> but yeah. it's emotional therapy. Yeah, exactly. And you're feeding them emotionally as well. It's, exactly. And, and, and I find that it's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of ladies out there that's not happy at home. Okay. Um, and, you know, I remember my mom telling me, she said, son, you can't save everybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if that's the way that you want to come and get your massage by conversation okay. while I'm doing the massage, I mean, hey, that's what I'm going to do with you. Yeah. But I find that it's a lot of um, women that are not getting attention at home. That they, okay. Exactly. And then when they come and see me, I, I, I can feel the release that, mm -hmm. I'm, that I'm giving them. Mm. Through the massage, right, right. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. And, that, and that's what a good massage. That's what a good massage therapist. <laughs> and you know, that's really good that you're able to. This is what I always say, Robert. Mm -hmm. We are multifaceted people who can do many things. We have many talents, many skills, many abilities. And I think it's great when you're able to exercise all of those, <laughs> like you've done. And um, but now things have switched. You're in the music industry mm -hmm. and all this good stuff. I want you to tell me, Robert, what's next for Ariel Bell? What's next is uh, for me to continue to, to, to entertain the world at a higher level. Gotcha. And that's, that's, that's what's going right now. Um, I'm, I'm wanted all over the international circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, but me being under contract and everything, um, I, I have to watch what I can and can't do. Yeah. You know, but um, right now, you know, I'm just... I'm just trying to go higher and higher up with me, you know, my band, um, that's what I'm looking for. Well, you know what, it looks like you're doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you were just recently in, was it Ohio or Nashville? Nashville. In Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the folks were going crazy. Yeah, they were. I saw a lot yeah. of the videos and things of that yeah, nature. Um, and it's just good to see you doing your thing, man. You mm -hmm. know, I remember watching you <clears throat> on the show and you walked up to uh, Scary Spice of the Spice Girls. I did, yeah. And uh, the way that you interacted with her and, and Heidi Klum mm -hmm. um, on that show, uh, I found it to be very interesting. So I, I realized, all right, I'll know how to, how to, you know, entertain the audience <laughs> and go in for the jugular. And that's what you were doing oftentimes when I saw you on that show, man. Right, right, right. And, and then you became known for your, for your bicep. I did. And so they actually kind of wanted you to show your body on that, that, that show, right? Yeah. They just kind of, yeah. right? Yeah, they, they, they did. Yeah, that was one of the little catchy things that they wanted to do to kind of uh, enhance that show right, during right, that time. Right. And so you became known for that guy with the bicep. Yeah, they called me the bodybuilding singer. <clears throat> the bodybuilding singer. Well, actually, singer. I got the bodybuilding singer. I got uh, Incredible Hulk Prince. <laughs> I got that. Uh, and then I got Black Fabio. Black Fabio. I was getting it all. You were getting it all. <laughs> I was getting it all. And I just told him, I said, hey, can I just be RL? Just let me be RL. That's the way. That's the way that they. Yeah. Now, um, on a on a more serious tip, um, you know, I was excited about you coming on the show, and mm -hmm. I was also excited about our awesome guest, Anika Chambers. Right, right. right. And uh, one of the things that we want to do with this show is dedicate uh, a couple of songs to our wonderful friend Angela Bessel, oh, that's great. who has just recently passed, right. and uh, and this show is in our in her honor. Right. So uh, I'm going to ask you to come back in just a moment and. I'd like to hear that song you're going to sing for us and yeah, your dedication yeah, yeah. To, to Angela and all that good yeah. stuff. So we're going to be back in just a moment. You guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> all right. Welcome back to this edition of the Farrell Phelps Show. As promised, we have the song dedicated to our amazing friend, Miss Angela Betzel, who we lost uh, just last week. Uh, this song is dedicated by none other than our guest today, Miss Anika Chambers. This is for you. Rest in peace. This is precious, Lord. Take my hand. Precious, Lord. Take my hand. Lead me on and let me stand. For I am tired. I am Through the 
storm through the night. Lord, lead me on to the light for precious Lord, take my hand and lead me home. Simply awesome. Simply so awesome. Thank you so much, Anika Chambers, for dedicating that song to our amazing friend, Angela Betzel. Thank you so much. All right. Next up is Mr. R.L. Bell as he dedicates a song to our wonderful friend Angela Bessel as well. So you guys stick around. We'll be back in just a moment. All right, as promised, uh, I told you guys we'd have a second guest who would dedicate a song to our amazing friend Angela Bessel. Uh, and now we have Mr. R.L. Bell as he dedicates a song to our best friend, our good friend, Miss Angela Bessel. Angela, this is for you. May you rest in peace. Uh, in social injustice 
uh, with those that were wrongly treated and so forth in this world. So we are so thankful to have had an angel in our lives and we will never, ever, ever forget Angela Bessel. And that's why we wanted to dedicate this song and this night to our dear friend. So we thank you guys so much. Now I just want to let you know about the show. For joining, uh, if you want to join us later, you want to see more on the Farrell Phelps show, just simply go to uh, my YouTube channel, type in Farrell Phelps. you see all the list of all of our shows right there for your viewing pleasure. You can also reach me at Let's Talk About It 12TV at gmail.com. That's Let's Talk About It 12TV at gmail.com to find out more about the show. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this edition of the Farrell Phelps show. And until next time, we'll see you then. I'm trying to please everybody that I'm seeing. <laughs> but you know, it, it all depends on what my song is about. If, if mm -hmm. I'm singing a, a love sexy song or whatnot, I mean, I want it to hit everybody, but yeah. I'm singing I'm singing it to the women, but it, it's like I'm talking through the guys to women too. You know, you know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, okay, I'm so you kind of express it from a guy's perspective. So, yeah. So you can penetrate them. I mean, <laughs> no. Not like I mean like penetrate their 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 so that they can <laughs> But you know what I mean? Yeah, and so and so 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 they can fit it from a man. <laughs>